Hi everyone, welcome to the Outfit channel. My name is Ange. I'm Chris. And behind us... It's Bowser. <laughs> Bowser or Unimog. So we spent the entire year of 2021 doing the entire build ourselves. We built it from scratch and today we are finally filming a walk around of it. It's never going to be completely finished for us I don't think but I think now is as good a time as ever to film a walk around. So we've got a few videos that we suggest you watch before watching this walk around. So if you want to know more specs about the Unimog itself, we did a full walk around when we just got it when it was bone stock X army camo. So we'll put the links in the description and as well in a little card over there. Awesome, let's get stuck into it. All right, so probably best to just start with a general overview of Bowser. Bowser, as Ange said, is an ex-army Mercedes Unimog. It is a U1700L, so it's the long wheelbase version, quite a lot longer than the ones you get over in Europe, the U1300. It is a four-wheel drive truck from 1983, and it has full portal axles, so it sits really high, heaps of ground clearance, has diff locks front and rear, so super, super capable off-road, and when you engage forward drive it, it pressurizes the entire drive line with air so it stops any water ingress coming into any important components like the diffs and the axles now it is sitting on 395 85r20 tires which Ange and i put on ourselves they are bkt's and that has given us a little bit more top speed and it's just better off road the stock tires that came from the army were no good it is a OM352 engine, which is a 5.6 litre straight six turbocharged engine, and we've left that pretty much bone stock. So one of the big questions that we always get asked is what is the top speed? Now it is no speed demon. I normally mother it between 80 and 85k an hour. It would be able to sit at 90 comfortably, but would probably notice our fuel consumption going up a bit. Now you can get an overdrive gearbox for these but they are expensive and that would enable us to sit uh, at faster speeds on the highway. But for us, we are full timers on the road so we're not in a rush so it hasn't bothered us at all that top speed. The only thing I wish I had a little bit more of was some more horsepower because going up hills I'll often have to change down in gears but it is what it is, it's an old truck and it is phenomenal off-road. So it's awesome articulation. The U1700L has a 12 ton GVM, when we bought it, it was 6.4 ton and now we just had it weighed and it is just over 9 ton. So we've still got heaps and heaps of room to play with, hopefully I can add a motorcycle to the rear and stuff like that so that's really really cool. Now it's 8 gears, forward and reverse, with its own selectable 4 drive and diff lock selector. Now this camper we've got as well a full breakdown video where we have all the details about the materials we use but just briefly just an overview about it. So in total the length of the Unimog with the camper is 7.1 meter long. We are just shy of 3.6 meter in height and in width we are 2.4 meter wide. Now the camper is built out of like very strong and lightweight materials. It is a 14 millimeter panels which are FRP panels so it's fiberglass reinforced plastic with the XPS foam between the two layers of fiberglass. So extremely durable, great for insulation, lots of really good pros in that respect. We've got a full video as well with the materials we use. As always, link in the description and card here. Alright, so let's start with the front of the truck. Now first up you'll notice the paint job. So Ange and I painstakingly painted basically every square inch of this truck with Raptor coat. So full driveline and chassis was stripped all the way back and then painted with black Raptor coat as well as the bumper and a bunch of other stuff like the fenders. And this is a sandy torp Raptor coat on the cab and now on the rear as well which we just finished. On the front we've got the stock bull bar with the Chinook lifting hooks. We've left those because they look really tough and at some point I may put a bar through them. We've got a GME XRS antenna and UHF system in the, uh, in the cab itself. We've changed the original light bulbs with LEDs. These are the infrared lights that come stock on the Unimog. We have laser lamps, ST4 driving lights at the front and we've got the work lights on the A-pillar on the sides. We have a Runva 20,000 pound winch front and rear. I'll show the rear one later on and we just have it covered at the moment with a bit of rubber just to protect the synthetic rope. Sabre shackle in the front and uh, we've got a custom built front bar by an engineer mate of ours who basically just built the center insert piece to hold the winch on. Other than that, pretty much stock standard on your Unimog. 
our one big goal was to try and keep as much of the X army memorabilia and working features of it as best we could. It's not a modern truck and we want to kind of keep that vibe as well, which we think we really have. We've got a, just a stock snorkel and then underneath the hood is all stock, that stock OM352 engine. Okay, we'll start on this right side of the truck. As I said earlier, we've got 395 85R20 BKT heavy duty, basically mud terrain tires. Now that is basically a 46 inch tire and we have them on the stock uh, army rims so these are steel all up it's just shy of 200 kilos with the tire the tube and the rim as well now front and rear we're on coils and we've just put in brand new beefy shock absorbers as well so those are brand spanking new we've got our first 18 bar air tank so this is our braking system air tank and we have a fitting off the side for filling up our tires so i'll turn the truck on i'll run that belt driven stock compressor and that'll fill up all four tires for us i've added in a water separator and pre-filter to our main fuel tank there is another twin filters and another glass bowl filter in the truck so we're well filtered with our diesel we don't want any any dirty diesel ruining our plants and here are twin batteries fire extinguisher got the 10 ton bottle jack that came from the army and we now have our stairs for entering the camper the scissor steps strapped to the front of this and locked down nicely with a new bracket we've got two disconnect switches one is for our main batteries which is a 24 volt system so two batteries in here and the other disconnect switch is for the front and rear winches together got our stock 160 litre diesel tank which yes know what you're saying 160 litres is actually really small for a truck so we have added another fuel tank on the other side which i'll show you later this little hose here is just a little contraption that i've been working on recently where i have a mechanical fuel pump to basically fill this tank which is our primary tank from the auxiliary tank and it's quite foolproof so there's not too much that can go wrong with that so i just put the hose into the tank press a button which is in our uh, battery compartment and fill this up fills the entire 160 liters in roughly seven minutes so that's pretty good this is our telescopic stairs these enable me to clean the windows and uh, add our canvas window protectors that we've just got got a garage on this side pretty messy uh, just briefly what we've got in here we've got oil got a gas uh, LPG gas cylinder for outdoor barbecue if we need it uh, big hose tools two pieces of wood so I can use that as a jack stand or for leveling the truck some weights electric chainsaw and then that goes all the way through to the other side of the garage for long things so in there at the moment we've got our 40 inch light bar which when we get started on a roof rack that light bar from laser lamps is going to go up there which would be awesome cannot wait for that and for a while there i was just running my spear gun and fins i've got fins in there now i'll show you where i've got the spear gun later so first garage space then we've got a jerry can at the moment that's just a spare water jerry can we'll probably change that to another diesel one for when we do the simpson desert because uh, we'll need as much fuel as we can get our hands on emergency triangles they're not really doing a lot under here we've got the input and exit points for our truma air conditioner which we'll show on the internal walk around and here we've got a extra just a king's just a budget brand twin air compressor a couple of reasons that enables us to not only fill our tires faster but also if our onboard air compressor ever died that mechanical one i can actually plumb into this fitting that i put on that front 18 bar tank and get us to seven and a half bar which is what is necessary to disengage the handbrake so basically if we lost air the handbrake automatically goes on as a safety feature and you can't go anywhere not ideal under the air compressor is a ball valve where we release all of our gray water so uh, we use biodegradable soaps anything like that so we can just empty our gray water basically as we go in the bush we normally have it open in fact because uh, then it doesn't smell it doesn't become black water after a few days so we have what i haven't shown you is two 40 liter tanks that are up under here under the tray and that's our gray water storage so far that's been ample we didn't want to be carrying around a whole bunch of dirty water there's just no point adding that weight we have two more air tanks stock from the truck and those are for the rear and basically everything else all the ancillary equipment coils in the rear the new shocks we've got 
a 10 litre diesel jerry can for our diesel heater which is inside that's plumbed up through the floor then we've got a toolbox so this is a stock one that came from the army that i relocated here got airline uh, all kinds of just tools uh, bits of equipment ratchet straps oils um, stuff for changing the tire plug kits stuff like that really that can be dirty and smelly and stay outside two more blocks of wood for leveling the truck and that's about it for the site okay now straight to the rear of the truck you'll notice there's only one bag i'm just waiting to get a few of these little locking clips and there'll be another trash bag here yeah, that's a brand new feature so we haven't even used this yet but that was something we were really missing out on was a place to put our recycling and dirty gear stuff like that I built the little Max Trax holder out of Tesla aluminium. So our four Max Trax extremes sit here. Then underneath we've got our infrared lights that came stock with the Unimog, the X-Army Unimog. And then we've got Glad Hand. So I was filling up all our tires from this point, which I've now swapped over to that 18 power point. If anything happened to that one, I can go off this one again. We've got two tubes that run the length of the tray. They are hollow. So they've been a really good place to, to store stuff. So we've got two awning poles and we've got a long shovel in there at the moment on the other side we've got a fishing rod and my spear gun here we've got the exhaust for the diesel heater we've got a rear vision camera which is wireless that works really well nice and clear and then we've got our rear winch behind the main plate so winch is behind uh, it's a little bit hard to show same saber alloy shackle we haven't had to use the winches yet, so uh, hopefully when we do, they will be worth their weight in gold, I'm sure. So, you see the hose under here, this is our urine, but we have a dedicated 40 liter urine tank, and that enables us to either empty it into a black water system, or we can empty it in the bush away from people and away from any water sources. So that's been really, really handy that we don't have to change that or do anything with a cassette. That's the breather for that. Now, what else? We've got, on this side that's about it really other than our really nice laser lamps that i've rigged up as a reversing light so uh, that really lights the area up for us yeah i suppose uh that's about it for the rear Ange. so we'll go around to the other side all right now left side of the truck so we'll start with the other toolbox this is one we got from another unimog owner one of the stock ones i minced it off road on the holland track but it's still kind of working We've got basically outdoor kind of kitchen area, I guess. A lot of my spear fishing kit is in here. And for ab diving, we've got um, a cooker, gas cooker. We can sit up on a table here uh, with some pots and pans, stuff like that. Below, we've got our Womo filter system. So we pull that out and use that for filling up our fresh water tanks. And uh, just some fittings. And again, like dive weights, things like that. Sand mat on the side, easy to get to. This hose, brand new feature we haven't actually used yet. We have another 40 liter tank underneath next to the P tank. And that is for an outdoor washdown station. So I've put a little pump under there, which is about 55 PSI. And uh, we'll use that for hosing off our feet and stuff like that if we're on the beach. Here is our water fill up station point. So this one in the front here with the water softener on here is for our main water tank. So we'll just plug that into a normal tap or a hose at a house or a park or caravan park and we can fill up our tanks and then we also have our one in the rear which is very similar another non-return valve which is for our town water supply so that's our higher pressure just uh, straight in there and then we've got breather system and a couple of things like that we've got our 10 amp out so that we can power tools whatever on the outside and then we've got our 15 amp in so we can plug in at a caravan park we've got our brake reservoirs they're just stock position but they're now nice and protected by this big 200 litre truck fuel tank so this is our auxiliary tank which we'll fill up and then i use the mechanical fuel pump to fill up our primary 160 litre tank now i did that for ease of use and also ease of installation and to make it kind of a foolproof strategy it was also more affordable i guess as well but it's kind of a foolproof strategy and that there's not a lot can, that can go wrong and if we don't use it we still no matter what have our 160 liter fuel tank i haven't cut into any fuel lines so we can't get any leaks or anything like that so i didn't set up a ballast system uh just we've got a um a big bucket there that's for draining uh, oils into stuff like that we carry that on the outside because it's big and bulky we have our spear tire 
So another brand spanking new BKT395 sits in, this is the stock cradle for the spare tire. We did not, under any circumstances, want to put it on the back of the box or on the roof of the cab. And that's just so that we can keep all of our weight down nice and low, which we have achieved because we do do off camera stuff. We don't want to feel tippy at all. All of the weight in this truck is down really low, which is great. In here, we've got a couple of kettlebells, some gym equipment and a spare tube for the tire. In here, this is now opened up because we've now got our stairs, which I showed you connected to the other battery box over there. So uh, at the moment, I've just got a little bit of firewood in here. In the back, I've got a full Sabre recovery kit and box with basically all kinds of things, paint, fluids, all my spares and stuff that I might need on the road. Uh, water, yeah, things like that. That also goes all the way through so uh, that we can have those long bits and pieces and I can reach some stuff from the other side and vice versa. So garage system we're really, really happy with. We've got lots of storage for the outside. And we've got our sail track rails. So this is so that we can run an awning, have it out the side here. And we also had one on the back as well. So we can put that same awning out the back. Two poles and it's set up. Nothing fancy. We didn't want a big bulky awning sticking out the side getting smashed to bits by trees and we didn't want an automatic one up high above our door because by the time it comes out it's not actually really shading you because this box is quite high so that's the best of both worlds for us and that's uh, so far yeah really really happy with it okay so let's talk about the cab now i won't go over an any detail at all really about what is stock on the Unimog. That was all in our first walk around that we did. I'll more talk about the mods that I've done since then. So starting over this side, we've got the GRME XRS Connect. I use that all the time, usually either to talk to Ange when she's got her hand radio, or I'll talk to road trains just to make sure that they know uh, when I'm pulling over so they can get out of the way and vice versa. We've got a little switch gang that I built over here. Now first switch cuts out all of my auxiliary electrical equipment basically so there's no way that's going to drain the battery then i've got next switch will be for the big 40 inch laser lamps light bar which will hopefully be going in one day soon and then the next one is for the st4s at the front those are so bright that probably didn't even need the light bar but uh, i want to do that anyway and the jellyfish launcher one on the on the side that is for my laser lamp pod lights which kind of just help lighting up a little bit of the peripheral in camp or when driving around at night that works quite well other than that we replaced the speedo because the original speedo died on us and i've changed that with a new hall effect sensor and programmed that for the diameter of the larger tires that we now have on the truck little usb 3.0 usb so we can charge our phones uh, while driving because we use our phones for gps ram mount holder which has been great and then we've got i guess it's kind of like an ebay special it's a four channel full-time camera system and we've just very recently installed a camera on the front top of the box facing forward and that is so that we know uh, when a branch is going to hit the box or not and whether we're going to clear obstacles things like that that's only just gone in and i'll be able to look at that through here other than that, the huge main thing we did was car builders insulation and Ange and I did all of that ourselves. We did three layers of car builders because in here, not only was it incredibly loud, sometimes like we'd have to wear earmuffs just to be able to deal with long drives. We'd be screaming at each other. It just made everything really exhausting. So that's cut down the sound immensely, but it's also cut out the heat because the transmission tunnel is back here. And all through here, it just used to radiate about 60 or 70 degrees. So it was just mad. So that has cut that down hugely. We've put wood on the door cards, some uh, marine plywood, as well as on the roof lining as well. So everything is really well insulated now, which is cool. So up here, not a ton going on. I've got a Olight torch, which I use all the time actually. We've also got another GME antenna. So if we're in mountainous terrain, I'll swap out the longer antenna for this different DB one. We've got air ride seats, which have been brilliant on two custom made seat bases. 
and just a few things in the back none of it being very spectacular i just made my own little molly system i guess there was a first aid kit right here but i split my head open a couple of days ago in the shed on the truck actually so Ange had to run around and get bandages for me so that i haven't put that one back yet but we've got basically garmin and reach explorer plus winch remote for the front winch the one for the rear i've got in the side pocket here just a fan, we'll probably swap that out for a better quality fan. This one is really, really loud. And then we also have a GME PLB. And this is a snake bite kit, which in Australia you want to have on you. And uh, that's about this side, I guess. So we'll move over to the passenger side. Okay, so over on passenger side, not a ton else going on really. We've got our Sabre recovery kit. And we've got a kinetic rope in here, which means that other vehicles could pull us out or we could pull out other vehicles. And we've got the full Mac Daddy 22 ton kit in the garage. Uh, this is our Indeflate that we're always using from Max Tracks for doing the tires. So we can do two tires at once with that. Again, just lots of carpet, bit of rubber. This is just the stock glove box and that's about what's going on in here we've kept the gun hatch so this still opens up and you can poke a head out here which is really nice and spot the way for me really happy with what's going on in the cab now that was an incredibly speedy walkthrough of basically what took us <laughs> a very very long time to work out what we needed how to do it Ange and I had no experience whatsoever of building something like this so if you're interested in watching us basically <laughs> Learning on the job. Yeah, guess our way through an entire build over a course of a year. We filmed a video pretty much every single week and that is up on YouTube. So feel free to watch that if you're keen to see more in depth about what actually went on for all of these mods. But that was a very speedy, speedy walkthrough. Yeah, so we'll have as well a dedicated walk around for the interior because there's so much to talk about. And I know a lot of people are looking forward as well to this one, but we'll film it very soon. We've got a few things we want to tweak and yeah, basically it. What can people expect in the future in the MOG? What would be some so added mods? We will, uh, for mods, I would really like it, that roof rack. So a roof rack with a box on the top so that I can store a few more things. I would like maybe a little bit more protection for our solar panels because we have 900 watts of solar up there. And it's not getting a hiding at all. That's been really good, but we want maybe a little bit more protection up there. And around the back, over here, the reason we've left this bear is that I would love a motorcycle in the back. I'm thinking an electric bike, maybe something like a Sauron. If you know of or have any recommendations on an electric bike, please let me know because I would love to put some sort of exo cage there with a bike on the back. So that is it for today. We have as well a lot of like cool off-road adventures that you can check out, not just the builds. So feel free to check that out as well. If you made it that far as well, maybe please consider subscribing. We really want to get to 100,000 followers by the end of the year. So that would oh, nice. really, really help us. Thanks so much for watching guys and stay tuned for the internal walk around very soon. Cheers.